Okay, so I've separated my, oh, y'all can see it. I don't have to pick it up. I've separated the subject from the background. So now I'm gonna paint my subject. Now the point of the first wash was to get pretty colors on your butterfly. So hopefully you're looking at your butterfly now and you're seeing that it's pretty much painted already. The, the colors that you put on in the first wash should give it some pretty colors. I think mine's a little weak. Most of y'all look a little, a little better. So what I wanna do is put some detail on it but not cover up all of the first wash. The first wash is the freshest and prettiest and almost always the, the prettiest part on the painting. So we don't want to cover all of it up. We want to just build on some of it, but let some of it show through. So I'm going to take, if my, I'm going to say my butterfly is pink. Um, That's a surprise. <laughs> there's a surprise, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pink and the blue that we started with. And... Um, do some shadows on him. Now, my butterfly has a, you know, a band around him, so I think I'm just gonna paint that first. Now, the colors underneath will show through and give you different passages of color. You don't want, you don't want it to be boring, anything but boring. So I'm gonna drop a little yellow in here and there and let that run. I'm gonna pick it up and let it go. You see it moving? Ooh, that's pretty. I'm just gonna keep doing that because that looks good. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make one of those little kind of butterfly -y shapes right there. It wasn't there, but I'm just gonna put it in. And maybe it turns a little more purple as it goes. I'm gonna drop some blue in over here. Now I'm using the same colors I've been using on the first wash. The fewer colors you use on your painting, the fresher it'll look. It seems it's hard because there's so many pretty, pretty colors and you want to use them all. But if you can refrain from that, and I don't like, I don't like how that looks, so I hesitate to show you all this, but I used a piece of toilet paper to lift that off. <laughs> I want it to come back to this orange color. So I've got a passage of color moving through there, pink to the yellow to orange to purple and back again. So right here, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to go around those little dots that are there. The ones on my butterfly are very small. Some of you have bigger. I'm going to paint around it. Leave them there. Drop a little yellow in there. Now, um, the, fun, the good thing about these butterflies is we don't have to worry about whether it's correct. I mean, I, who's to say that somewhere in the Amazon this butterfly doesn't exist, you know? We don't know. I can paint them any color I want. And actually in art, you can paint anything, any color. We recognize things by their shape. So it wouldn't matter what color I painted this. We recognize that as a butterfly because we know the shape. So don't get, don't get bogged down with color problems. So I would just continue around. I'm not going to do it all. Y'all know what to do at this point. Okay. The wings. There's two ways to attack these. I can paint right across these veins and make, you know, with color, or I can paint in between them, or I can do both. I think I'm going to do both. I'm going to go with the blue and see what happens. I'm going to come down here, lay that brush down and let it run. Okay, now I touched it right there where the pink was, and so it's moving where the water is. I like that, you know? I, I like an impressionistic, unfinished, loose, runny, kind of uh, fill in the blanks kind of look. I want that heart line, I want that softer there. Okay, I can drop, what color do you want me to drop in there? Pink? Why not? Now, see how that makes a nice hard edge, but maybe I don't want it that hard. I have just water on my brush. I just tickle the edge, kind of soften it a little bit. Because I don't want to like take the paint off, but I just want to soften it. Okay, so that would be like painting around the veins. Over here, oh, let me do this one right here. 
What if I went the other way? Some of you, your underpainting is so pretty, you don't want to cover it up. So maybe you just put, you paint right on the veins. Just follow your, um, I can't talk in paint. Okay, now that's pretty, right? Yes, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But it's prettier if I drop some color in it and let it run. Put a little pink in there too and see what happens. Now it's wet, so paint's gonna go where the water is. I'm gonna pick this up and let it run. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So um, for those of you that have a really beautiful underpainting, maybe you just wanna do some veins like that. Um, and for the rest of us, we should do the other. It's whatever you like. <laughs> just, you know, you said for those of you. Hers is the sarcastic painting. All oh, right, sarcastic painting. You probably want to do both at the same time. <laughs> um, again, if, if you have an area that's like looks a little too hard, take a nice clean piece of toilet paper and blot it. And it always irritates me when the part I take off my painting is like the best thing on there. <laughs> I find it so irritating, yet, you know, that's, that's the nature of the beast. Okay. I like light and dark, cool and warm, hard edges, soft edges, all those things, a push and a pull, a push and a pull. Um, you don't want it all just the same. If it looks just like a photograph, just take a photograph. Okay, for those of you that want this one with all that really dark purpley blue, you, you're going to come like I did along here with the darker color and drop color in. I've got the two colors that I used on that.